Hi booktubes, I'm here to do a book haul. This is mainly a Powell's book haul over Memorial Weekend. I decided to go to the giant uh, Powell's bookstore in downtown Portland. Um, and I normally only go there like on rare occasions. The last time I went was my birthday in December. So it's like once every six months or so I'll go and splurge. And so it's a huge, huge bookstore and I never managed to see all the areas I'd like to go to but I did manage to pick up a few books of course and so I thought I'd show them to you. So the first one um, I was still in the western June on the range uh, mindset and so I went to the western section first and so this one is Jerry Hurd's uh, Kate Burke Shoots the Old West and a lot of these I've never heard of the authors. I, I read westerns but I um, am not versed at all on author so I purposely went in looking for authors I hadn't heard of and so this is this the cover is what caught my eye it was very bright and colorful um so this one says she shoots with her heart um it says that the woman and her family share the same fault too much passion and Kate's burning passion is photography um and I didn't give like, too much description on these books there's just too much um, to go through here but there's that one kind of a unique cover and then more of a traditional uh, Western cover, which is what I would think of, is Petticoat Wagon Train by Wayne C. Lee. And for this one, it's the title that drew my eye. And this one says, Jeff Ryan knows he's in for plenty of trouble when he's forced to lead a wagon train full of pretty young women from Kansas to Colorado. And it also has like a wraparound uh, cover on the back, which I like. A Handful of Men by Robert Wilder. And this one says, all hell comes to Texas. They were never more than a handful, but they were the law as Texas knew it. Judge, jury, and executioner. For a thousand miles along the Rio Grande, Captain Sol Carter and his men were all that stood between the settlers and the predatory bands of cutthroats, thieves, and murderers. Now someone from across the border was secretly arming the Indians. Someone with money and power. Someone who wanted to plunge Texas into the bloody hell of an Indian war and sees the rich frontier wilderness for himself. Then going to nonfiction, I have No Life for a Lady by Agnes Morley Cleveland. And again, I was looking at the frontier western uh, kind of theme here, even though it's not technically a western. But this is um, when Agnes was born on a New Mexico cattle ranch in 1874. The term Wild West was a reality, not a cliche. In those days, cowboys didn't know they were picturesque. Horse rustlers were to be handled as seemed uh, as seemed best on the occasion, and young ladies thought nothing of punching cows and hunting grizzlies in between school terms. And so that description like really um, pulled me in, so I wanted to give this one a try. I have Woven on the Wind, Women Write About Friendship in the Sagebrush West, and this is edited by Linda Hasselstorm, Gaydol Collier, and Nancy Curtis. And this is a collection of writings from women. Um, and there's things like poetry, I think there's like newspaper paper clippings, there's short stories, there's a recipe on here for how to make homemade noodles. There's all, sort, all sorts of things that I just thought it would be um, kind of neat to read about on like the lifestyle of living on the frontier and not just a straight narrative uh, fiction or, or book or journal and so yeah this was interesting to me. Um, and then going back to westerns I have The Complete Western Stories of Elmore Leonard. Um, I've been meaning to read this for quite a while and even though I could get this on my Kindle I thought having a physical book would kind of nudge me more and I, I like reading um, physical books for short story collections because I'm like slowly making my way through it and it's just I don't know it's easier to pick up in that format for short stories for me. And this is um, Take a Tour of the Wild Wild West with a Master Writer as Your Guide. And he, um, he's written quite a few um, books like, uh, like, what am I thinking of? Um, what's the name? A hard, like hard, bo hard boiled, um, like mystery. But I just flipped, um, I get distracted because I just flipped this open and I really like these end papers. This is really neat. Um, and I, I wasn't aware of this. I picked this up. So I, yeah, this is really cool. Talk about like uh, Western covers. This the, what is the back of? Yeah, the similar, similar thing. Here's the author here. So this is an author I read a, a little bit by, but I want to steep myself in his Western. 
and then I have Paperback Crush and this is by Gabrielle Moss. I've um I've already read this book but when I saw it I was like oh I remember loving this book. I read it when it first came out back in like I don't know like 2019 something like that let me see. Uh, came back in tw uh, 2018. So I read it then and um yeah so I just wanted to get a copy for myself to own. This is all about and it's like <laughs> really vibrant uh in papers and then the back has some like well-known like book series and this is all about like the 80s and 90s um like the scholastic books things like that um like it has goosebumps here sweet valley high babysitter's club um some series i i never heard of and i when i was reading through this i wanted to read some of the series that i'm talking about but i never got to many of them but inside it gives you like some pictures of the um the titles and it talks about you know the time period in which these were um written and why like what spurred them on um it talks about less like the, the twins like why there's so many twins series um the, like the fad of horses um things like that like girl groups and like sleepovers all it's, it's just a really fun book and it brought like lots of memories um, so if you like reading like 80s and 90s um like the long series fiction then this is i highly recommend this book it's, it's just lots of fun and you find like all sorts of series that I never knew about. Um, then I have Bird Woman, Sacagawea's own story. This is recorded by James Willard Schultz. Um, and for this one, I picked this up because I'm currently reading Lewis and Clark's uh, journals. And I've never, I don't think I've ever read, unless like it was in like middle school or high school, like any, anything really on Sacagawea. So I thought this would be um, kind of neat. And there's like, was there a bookmark in here? It looks like math problems <laughs> so speaking of school it's like someone was <laughs> using a set of math problems uh, as a bookmark which is funny i i love it um used books you find random things in here so they got like it seems if they if this bookmark is accurate they got like halfway through it <laughs> but this is as a child in the early 1800s earth woman listened to nightly storytelling with the warm glow of the lodge of her father forebears chief of the mandans and friend of chiefs of Chief's Long Knife and Red Hair, also known as Captains Lewis and Clark. One of the storytellers was a young woman who, with her husband and infant child, had traveled with the two white chiefs to the land of the everywhere of the everywhere salt water. She was called Bird Woman, also Grass Woman, and she was known as Sacagawea. This is her story as retold in the lodges of the Blackfeet by Earth Woman, aka aka Mrs. James Kipp. Let's see, and here's her second Julia's own story passed down into the, in the tradition of Native Americans. And so that's why it says recorded by uh, James Willard Schultz. Then for a shift in genre, I have the Selected Journals of L.M. Montgomery. This is edited by Mary Rubio and Elizabeth Watterson. This is volume one, 1889 to 1910. Uh, I... This, of course, is the author of Anne of Green Gables, and um, I've read many of her books, but I don't think, and, and I don't think I have, I've read any biography of her or, or her journals. I've only, like, read her Wikipedia page, which I know, like, it talks about, um, so I know a little bit about her, her personal life uh, and how, um, even though her books are very, like, optimistic, um, and, like, the grass is all you're on the other side, like, she did have a lot of, like, since, like, depression and things, so I'm not sure you know, what all this book is going to cover. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping to learn more about her and maybe this will inspire me to pick up a biogra biography. Um, if any of you read a biography of her, I'd be interested in some recommendations. Um, but yeah, she, she lived from 1874 to 1942. So this is, this one, she was like quite young then, 1889. Um, so yeah, this like, yeah, I'll have to like see how, how many volumes there are of her journals. So yeah, this will be Interesting. Is there any pictures or anything outside? Yeah, they, there are um, some um, in here of her. Then I have Lucy Breckenridge of Grove Hill, The Journals of a Virginia Girl, 1862 to 1864. And this is edited by Mary D. Robertson. And this, is, it says, um, Lucy wrote primarily about what she herself knew and experienced. Her diary is about, okay, this is just a little quote here let's see is there anything about her um uh, it says offers candid views of life on the home front as she chronicles the war that killed three of her brothers she also uses her diary to debate 
such universal issues as war, peace, religion, love, marriage, and the role of women in society. So this is like going to be a diary of the Civil War in Virginia. And the little front here, sit, this is a quote from Lucy herself. It says, I wish the women could fight. I would gladly shoulder my pistol to shoot some Yankees if it were allowable. So yeah, this is for sure a Confederate, <laughs> Confederate, uh, you know, view in the South. Um, I read a couple. I read um, uh, from the South's perspective. And now I'm like blanking on the name of like, um, oh, like the two, like the two famous ones. I have read those. But okay, I can't think of the name. Um, so this is like one I've not heard of before. Then I have Hard Tack and Coffee, Soldier's Life in the Civil War. And this is by, is there an author? I'm sure that, um, this is by John D. Billings. I just couldn't find it on the cover here. And so this was interesting to me because it says it's originally, it was originally published in 1888 and it became immediate bestseller. Uh, let's see if there's any description. Um, chapters on living quarters, foraging, wagon trains, army rations, offenses and punishments, uh, equipment, the army mule, hospitals, and much more. So when I was looking through the book, and here's some illustrations here. When I was looking through it, like the title, I mean the, the chapter titles, like Life in the Life in Tents, Life in the Log Huts, um, like army rations that were just mentioned, um, contents of their packs, um, a day in the camps. So yeah, yeah, just like the like the day-to-day -day life of the army soldiers, which was really interesting to me. Um, then I have, so, see, I have Fast Into the Night by Debbie Clark uh, Madero. And this is a woman, her dogs, and their journey north on the Iditarod Trail. I love books set in Alaska and books about dogs at Iditarod. Is fascinating to me and this is um let's see part adventure part love story part inquiry into the mystery of connection between humans and dogs uh, let's see and that's a little like in a little snippet is there any yeah that's the only description we get um first fast into the night is an exquisite written memoir of a woman her dogs and what can happen when someone puts herself in that place between daring and doubt and soldiers on so yeah i've read um quite a few stories in the a men's perspective of doing this like modern day and in the past, but this will be our first book by a, about a woman who is taking on the Iditarod. Then I have a couple Little Free Library books that I picked up. Um, I have a, several John Steinbeck books, um, and this is The Winter of Our Discontent, and this is the only one I haven't read of this bunch. I read almost everything that John Steinbeck's ever written, so this will be uh, new to me. Then I have um, Tortilla Flat, and when I saw this, I just, when I was just like putting my book pile together, I saw this, something was sticking out here and I looked at it and it's a Borders, um, like the Borders bookstore that closed many years ago from, uh, 2005. <laughs> so this was, um, when they were still open and running. So there's that one. Then I have The Pearl and I have Canary Row. And these just remind me of me reading, um, of Mice and Men when I was a freshman in high school, like this with the orange uh, spine. And so I looked through it before um, picking these up from the free library and there no, there's no highlights or anything. So, um, which I always like want to make sure if I'm getting a, a free book or, you know, buying a book in a bookstore, I, I don't like lots of highlighting and notes. Let's see. And then I have Inside of a Dog, What Dogs See, Smell, and Know by Alexander Horowitz. And I've read her, her newest book about dogs. Um, but I haven't read this one, which is, which is an older book. Um, like the newest book, I think it came out like 2020, 2019, 2018, something around there. And this is like, she's like a, you know, a scientist, uh, studying them. And see, is there any description of her? Yeah, she teaches, um, psychology at Barnard College and Columbia University. Before her scientific career, Horowitz worked as a lexi lexicographer, well, I can't pronounce the word, lexicographer at Merriam-Webster and served on the staff of the New Yorker. Um, and she lives with, anyway. anyway. So, uh, yeah, uh, I love books about dogs. And so, yeah, this is like a kind of like behind the scenes, like not like a person's own experience with owning a dog, but like the scientific study and the psychology behind them and how, how their brain works. And this last one here is The Mystery in Dracula's Castle by Vic Crum. And I saw this and I was just like, okay, I have to pick this up. Um, I've read Dracula multiple times, but I've never seen any film adaptation. Um, <laughs> but this, this was just 
it's so weird. It says, based on the exciting television movie from Walt Disney Productions. And so it has, um, like, behind the scenes of the movie or something. I'm not sure exactly what all is going on here. He's a little boy in a cape. <laughs> what all is going on here, it says, um, that movie wasn't even scary, Alfie Booth complains. My movie will be a lot better than that. Alfie plans to make a Super 8 Dracula movie starring his brother Leonard. What he doesn't plan on is getting mixed up in a jewel robbery with an amateur detective um, and a thieving dog named Most Aptly Trouble. Here's the story of the TV movie, parts 1 and 2 from Walt Disney Productions. So we'll, we'll see what all this is about because I am not exactly sure um, if this is uh, fiction or not fiction book because... It's like chapter one, chapter two. Like I don't, I'm not sure exactly. Um, but I will look more to this <laughs> and report back probably in October on what all is involved here in this book. But I, I just couldn't pass it up. So anyway, I'm sorry if you hear a fable like sighing in the background. She is due for a walk. Um, if she was sitting beside me, I would of course have her on camera. But she's right behind the camera staring right at me. Um, so now that I've finished showing you these books, I'm going to go out on a walk. It's a very gloomy, uh, rainy day here today. Um, it, it seems to be like maybe the last batch of rain before we get actually get some summer weather and maybe the rain's gonna hold off until the fall but, but we'll see anyway fingers crossed I don't get rained on <laughs> would be great anyway I'll talk to you soon thanks booktube